Well, good morning once again, everyone. I'm Paula Short, Communications Director in the President's Office. I'd like to welcome you this morning to our convocation. We are in the midst of a wonderful 10 days or so of Grizz welcome for the campus community. I hope that you'll seek out additional events in the coming days to celebrate the start of this academic year. Tonight, we'll be gathering at 8 o'clock for our academic convocation, which is always a wonderful opportunity to reconnect with our colleagues and meet our students. There is one change to the schedule to convocation this evening, and that is the change of venue. Due to the poor air quality in Missoula and consideration for our community members and students who struggle with respiratory sensitivities to smoke and the fact that the Missoula air is rated today as unhealthy, we're gonna move convocation into the Denison Theater this evening and we'll be moving some of the uh, satellite gatherings that come at the conclusion of the formal remarks into some adjacent locations. So look for that, but the main gathering place will be at Denison Theater tonight at eight o'clock. Our interpreter this morning is Denise May. Thank you, Denise, for helping us this morning. I want to say welcome and thanks also to our media partners and specifically Missoula Community Access Television for broadcasting the event today. Also, a reminder, or I should say, I let you know that we will be concluding our event today with a special toast, and that's the reason for the glasses and carafes on the tables. It is my pleasure to introduce this morning the president of the University of Montana and, here's the surprise part, at least for the broadcast, it, that uh, she is celebrating a birthday today. Yes. That was not a surprise to her that today is her birthday, but perhaps that I was letting the entire room know. Please welcome Dr. Sheila Stearns. Uh, thank you, Paula. That's the kind of thing you try to keep on the down low, and that's not always easy to do and was not easy today. Hal just said, what? A birthday? Actually, when we woke up the, today, he said, you know, I think I know someone who has a birthday today, and I said, yes, my twin brother Peter. <laughs> I better call him, and I did. Uh, welcome to all of you to this convocation. Pretty excited about it, having it where we can sit around tables and visit with each other as you came in and even now, and as we move toward um, introducing and recognizing and appreciating all of you who have achieved merits and promotions and, and welcoming those of you who are new to campus in different roles. So I changed it to this venue and I'm delighted to see it here and see so many of you. I would like to ask if you have joined the UM family in the past year, I think probably this almost includes you, Provost Edmund, and I'll introduce you in about a moment. So from Provost Edmund forward, when did you join us? Maybe uh, a little over a year ago. Oh, uh, uh, <laughs> but who's counting? <laughs> who's counting? If you joined us, staff, faculty, in the last year, would you please stand up? So we just for about 30 seconds so we know and we recognize you. Uh, welcome and congratulations, even for those of you who've been here for a number of weeks or months. Now I would like to introduce my colleague, my one of my new best friends, and that is our provost, Beverly Edmond, as she makes her way up here to take control of this part of our convocation, our welcome convocation. I would like to say how I think, how privileged we are that she came to the University of Montana, is serving as provost, and agreed to serve into this year, probably well into this year, and perhaps throughout the year, and she's doing a wonderful job. Thank you, and, and welcome, Provost Edmund. Good morning. 
as interim provost and vice president for academic affairs for my second wonderful year at the University of Montana. I am absolutely delighted to recognize those faculty members who have been awarded tenure and promotion this year. As many of you know, tenure is a significant landmark in a faculty member's career as our promotion to associate professor and to full professor. Broadly speaking, these awards recognize faculty progression and accomplishments in the areas of teaching, research, and service to the university, as well as to their professions. At this point, I would like to invite the deans of the schools and colleges to the podium to recognize their faculty. If you are in the audience and your name is called, I would ask that you stand for a round of applause at the end of the announcements. Thank you. Thank you, President Stearns, Provost Edmund. I'm Paul Kurgis, the Dean of the Blewett School of Law. Two faculty members uh, at the Blewett School of Law received promotion to full professor with tenure this year. We ask a lot of our faculty here, and both of these faculty members step up whenever they are asked. And they also are two of our faculty members who reach out across campus to engage with the broader university community. I'd like to recognize Professor Stacy Gordon, our librarian and the recipient of the Distinguished Service Award last year, Stacy, and Professor Anthony Johnstone, our constitutional law scholar uh, who works with many of you around campus, in particular in philosophy and poli sci. Anthony. everybody. Uh, Reed Humphrey, Dean of the College of Health Professions and Biomedical Sciences. Uh, I have more than two, so I have a list here. Uh, the winner of the best picture is Moon, oh, sorry, wrong one. This is the one. Yeah. Uh, as, uh, as Paul noted, it's, it's a distinct honor to, uh, to recognize faculty members from my college who've, been, who've worked hard and earned the distinction of both tenure uh, and promotion. So I will uh, call out your names. And if you would ri remain, remain standing for more than just a moment until we've completed, that would be awesome uh, uh, if you're here. So Philippe Diaz uh, has achieved tenure this year, as has Dr. Anita Santasir. Uh, Yoon Hee Cho has been promoted to associate professor. Uh, Lori Walker, social work, also promoted to associate professor. And we have three full professor promotions this year to announce uh, Jim Karinji uh, from uh, Social Work, James Laskin, who is on uh, Fulbright in uh, Thailand at the moment, uh, so he's probably lying down, uh, and uh, Tony Ward from uh, Public Health. Uh, so if you'd rise and uh, be recognized, thank you so much for your contributions to college. Good morning, everybody. I'm Christopher Comer, Dean of the College of Humanities and Sciences. And like my colleague, Dean Humphrey, I'd ask the folks who I'm going to name, and there's quite a group this time, to please rise and stay standing until we finish the college's list. So first, uh, for tenure and promotion to associate professor, Anisa Goforth. Also for tenure and promotion to associate professor, Corey Palmer. Also for tenure and promotion to associate professor, Sarah Rinfrey. For tenure, Matthew Church, Jim Elzer, Kwan Ha, Khalid Hutali, Ted Van Alst. For promotion to associate professor, Rosalind Lapeer, David Macaluso, Katrina Mullen, for promotion to full professor, Rebecca Bendick, Joel Iverson, and finally, but not least, Rob Saldine. Thank you all for your contributions to the college and the university.
Good morning, everyone. I'm Stephen Calm, the Dean of the College of Visual and Performing Arts. And uh, I'm pleased to announce uh, four very deserving faculty members from my college. First, uh, David Edmonds. David is the director of choral activities in our college. And David, has uh, he's about to take the Chamber Corral to Cuba this year. He will uh, be promoted. He's promoted to associate professor. Uh, then we have Rob Tapper. Rob Tapper is our director of jazz studies and a trombonist extraordinaire. Uh, he has achieved tenure. Christopher Kirkpatrick. Uh, Chris is a uh, internationally renowned clarinetist and uh, wonderful teacher, and he has also achieved tenure this year. And last but not least, our Emmy award-winning media arts professor, Greg Twig. Greg has just been promoted to full professor. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Shali Zhang, Dean of the Mansfield Library. I'm very happy to announce two distinguished library faculty in this promotion, tenure and promotion. Suzanne Carroll for tenure. Suzanne, thank you. Uh, Kat Zoner, promotion to full professor. She's, uh, she's around somewhere. I just want to congratulate for them for the, their wonderful, wonderful work. As you also know, they work full, they, those two individuals as other library faculty, they work full 12 months. In addition to that full load work, they have to do wonderful research and services. Lots of work. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Shannon O'Brien, and I am honored to be the dean of Missoula College. And we are um, becoming well known right now because of the new building that um, we call our River Campus across the Clark Fork River. We invite you to come visit. Um, but I'm here today to honor our faculty who have received um, earned promotion. Uh, Michelle Bowler, promotion to associate professor. Cheryl Gallipo, promotion to associate professor. Ali Pepper, a, a promotion to associate professor. Steve Shen, promotion to associate professor. And Mary McHugh, promotion to full professor. We are very grateful for your service and your continued work. Thank you. I'm Roberta Bobby Evans of the Phyllis J. Washington College of Human Sciences and Education. And I'm very pleased to introduce two women who have uh, excelled and are here to be receiving promotion to receiving tenure today. I have to say Ginger Collins from Communicative Sciences and Disorders has been part of the rising of the Phoenix of the department, and we are glad she will be staying. In addition to Ginger, it's important that we see Veronica Johnson today, who is now the chair of the Department of Counseling and has been awarded tenure. In promotions to associate professor, topping the list is Kate Braco, whose field of literature and English language learners uh, keeps language dual immersion alive in Missoula. In addition to Kate, Lindsay Nichols, another faculty member in counseling, is associate professor, and we're very proud of her. Promotion to full professor, members of three departments. First, from teaching and learning, Lucilla Rudge. Her name is synonymous with International Baccalaureate. She's created a uh, project that provides this university with the training ground for all of that work statewide and regionally. John Matt, department chair of educational leadership, is full promote professor, and he conducts international programs as well as the development of three new degrees. 
And finally, I once referred to her at introduction as LeBron James for the game changer we knew she would be at the University of Montana. I'm very thrilled to announce that Julie Walter is here as full professor today and chair of the Department of Communicative Sciences and Disorders. Congratulations to you all and thank you. Good morning, I'm Chris Shook, Dean of the School of Business, and we are thrilled to announce the promotion of Justin Engel to Associate Professor, a uh, superstar marketing researcher, and just happens to be a Patagonia-sponsored ultramarathoner. Thank you. Good morning, I'm Larry Abramson, Dean of the School of Journalism, and I am honored to announce that Jason Begay, an alum of our school, has been granted tenure. Jason is the leader of the Native News Honors Project, which brings news from Native American communities to people all over Montana and also spreads news about the good work of the University of Montana to those Native communities. Take a bow, Jason. You, you deserved it. Good morning, everyone. I'm Tom DeLuca. I'm the dean of the W.A. Frankie College of Forestry and Conservation. I have the honor of introducing several of our faculty today for their uh, promotion or award of tenure. I'll start with tenure. Uh, first of all, John Kimball uh, is awarded tenure in the Department of Ecosystem and Conservation Sciences. Libby Metcalf is awarded tenure in the Department of Society and Conservation. And Josh Milsbaugh is awarded tenure also in the uh, Department of Ecosystem and Conservation Sciences and a professor of wildlife biology and the Boone and Crockett chair, as a matter of fact. Uh, next are promotions to associate professor. Brady Allred was promoted to associate professor in the Department of Forest Management. He's a professor of range ecology and management. Uh, Ash Ballantyne, promotion to associate professor in, also in the Department of Ecosystem and Conservation Sciences. Uh, Vicki Dreitz, promoted to associate professor in Department of Ecosystem and Conservation Sciences. Uh, and Kelsey Genso, promoted to uh, associate professor in the Department of Forest Management. Uh, our promotion to full professor, Dave Fleck. Uh, the chair of uh, the Department of Forest Management, promoted to full professor. Keith Bosak, uh, prof um, promoted to full professor in the Department of Society and Conservation. Mark Hebelwhite, promoted to full professor in the Department of uh, Ecosystem and Conservation Sciences. And Laura Young, promoted to full professor in the Department of Society and Conservation. Thanks for all you do for your contribution to the college, the university, and the state of Montana, and congratulations. What a wonderful opportunity to celebrate our distinguished faculty. I would like to ask all faculty now who have been awarded tenure and promotion this year to please stand so that we may recognize you as a group. Please stand. Thank, thank you. We have, we have featured all of these faculty members as well as our new faculty on the provost website for the first time this year and i invite you all to visit this site to learn more about these distinguished individuals thank you just a little bit more again good morning this is such an honor to be here with you at the beginning of the academic year. Something that I first did with some of you, I don't know anyone here in this room, 
was here when I started as a freshman 53 years ago this fall. We were on the quarter system, so it was actually a little later in September. Somehow they weren't having fires every fall at that time, or frequent falls. But it has became quickly and has remained a place that I have loved and continue to love. What I would like to do today is to have both a conversation, if you will, but also a call to action. Today, as uh, Elizabeth Barrett Browning would say, let us count the ways in which you hear me call for you to step forward and to act, to do, to engage in leadership and to engage in service in ways even above and beyond the many ways you already do, which are significant and impressive. Our theme is We Are Montana. One of my first official acts as president last December was to get in a van that said we are Montana on the side of it and to travel with Vice President Crady and Director of Communications Paula Short and Dean Humphrey and others to visit schools in the Valley, or Valley County. And we visited with principals and superintendents and talked about what does it mean to be We Are Montana. We found them to be, as you might expect, always delighted to see and hear from those of us at the university. There are so many ways that each one of those deans who just was up on this stage inter engage and their faculty, all of you, engage with those schools, with our community partners throughout the state. They were very pleased to hear from us, they gave us advice. But I have thought ever since then, what do we mean when we say we are Montana? So today is a bit of a definition, just my definition of that for you. That's why I wanted my outline here to be sure that I touched on most of those pieces. I think we are Montana in the classroom. We have a speakers bureau that some of you faculty have already signed up for. Here's my first call to action. Those of you who are members of our Speakers Bureau so that we can promote your name, as the admissions office already does, as someone who is, and this includes you deans and all kinds of you, in fact, who are able and willing to participate, to come up with a title for your presentation in the classroom. We don't want to just put your name out as a resource person. We want to be able to say your name and the topic for this semester or this year that would really intrigue that mathematics or that English or that civics teacher to say, ah, that is a person I would like to invite to my school to speak on that topic and come up with that date to engage with you. Read, there's no doubt in my mind with all the interest in health professions that the UMHM, that the Neural Injury Center, that any number of topics, particularly a hook, so that we have more of us who are getting calls to, to uh, work with Vice President Crady and Emily Steger, our admissions director and others to get out there across Montana. And speaking of that, I would like to mention the aforementioned Hal Stearns, who earlier this summer, speaking of a call to action, he was, he's on the Humanity Speakers Bureau and was asked to speak out in Glendive and Mile City. So he spoke with, with Tom Crady and me, and he said, what if I um, take a, some packets and pennants and things from the University of Montana and drop them along the way. And we said, well, you know, how productive could that be? It's August, you know, who's going to be around? Well, in some ways, I just have to say only Hal Stearns. Uh, he, he got the bug, and he has visited over 50 high schools since then. And at each high school, he has found somebody, even on a Saturday. Was it a 
volleyball coach was there with her team. Out in Plevna, how many of you knew that Plevna had a high school? Uh, now it's not going to make an enrollment surge time because they don't have a graduate this year. <laughs> but he spoke with the, the lady who's the whole English department and she is delighted, was delighted to hear more about our English department, how it's grown, what it's doing. I think she got her master's with us. She was delighted to get an update. And so throughout the state, what he did find, which was, you know, from all over, he ended up going up north to Hot Springs, as far south as Darby, uh, to Baker, Weibo, you know, you name it. Harlowton, that won't surprise you, those who know him, but little towns all over the place. And everywhere, the superintendent, because it was still August, or the principal, or the high school counselor would say, do you have time to visit? Emily and Tom would give their right arm, you know, to have when our recruiters go to say, do you have time to visit? Because usually we're there at a time they don't. So Hal was able to be our ambassador. Thank you, Hal. It was, it was kind of a partnership. <laughs> By We Are Montana, I mean we are a city within a city as well. We are one of Montana's largest cities. When you combine our 11 to 12,000 students and our between two and 3,000 employees, we're one of Montana's largest cities, which is why people are so interested in the university and that we live up to what our very first president said the university it shall prosper it shall it will and it is i have found this summer that the university is particularly spectacular as a summer place meeting humphrey scholars and meeting Professor Chin's Writing Institute scholars and stopping to visit with students who are here on camps and outdoor field experiences or for the Schwanke Summer Institute with the Davidson Honors College. We are a magnificent summer place, an academic place as well as one where I keep hearing from Dean Shook, for example, where was his last hike over the weekend? It's kind of embarrassing for someone who's lived in and out of Missoula for so many years. He's been to places I have yet to even try out. But now I have new motivation. Because of this summer place, that means we are Montana. And finally, I want to say a, a couple things. Shannon, Missoula College is beautiful. It is literally not quite, I mean, figuratively, not quite literally yet, the bridge across between the river campus and the mountain campus. But we have dreams, do we not, to have a bridge. Uh, Mike Reed, whom I'll recognize in a moment, and others, we're not going to build a bridge yet, but we're working with partners. We're investing in exploring possibilities so that we can more easily walk across between the two campuses and connect Missoula with our downtown and with our, the, the eastern side of the, of the city um, more easily than we do right now without having to get into a vehicle and drive all the way around. So dreaming about it, working on it. Missoula College, a few of you are here nodding. Give me a wave. I see a few of you, you know, are thinking, yeah, wouldn't that be great? It would be. For one thing, you have a restaurant at noon. We, a lot of us want a quick and easy way to get over there. We hope that we can make that happen. And Kent, I think I saw you. Uh, Kent has a Grizz Nation this summer is getting fired up. Um, thank you for letting us use the stadium the other night to welcome our new students. I, if you look on our, the home picture on our website today, it's me um, having, asking some international students were the ones coming through the, the big um, helmet right then, and I, they're looking self-consciously at themselves up on Grizz Vision, which was very fun for them and for us. They were sort of horrified. It is kind of shocking to see yourself on a big screen. But then they realized it was 
it was kind of fun. So a lot of you helped with that big welcome on Sunday night, and I hope you'll turn out to help, them, help us again with the convocation tonight. And finally, when I think of We Are Montana, I think of our connection to other universities and places. And let me just mention three. We have to be thinking as community members about our friends and neighbors and colleagues in the Lolo area and the Florence area. And Dean McLean, Roger, how are you doing? Are you evacuated yet? You're still good. But who else woke up to hear NPR this morning say that 600 homes are threatened in Sealy, another neighboring community that is part of who we are as Montana? And there's no doubt in my mind that there's someone in this room or someone who would have been in this room this morning except for some threat to themselves or to family members in one of those two areas or other areas nearby. And finally, We Are Montana to me means we are also connected to universities throughout the country. Think of at least three, four, five universities in the Houston area. Think of that. They are challenged. They probably have colleagues of some of yours. Some of you may know them. You probably are already reaching out to them. In some ways, some of you probably have with an email to say, how can we help? I hope and suspect they're hearing from colleagues all over the country, and I challenge us to be allies with them as we are thinking under the leadership of several of the deans and others of our colleagues at the University of Virginia and Charlottesville who are starting their academic year under a, a, a sense of tension. They had violence and fear on their campus. It could be any campus where we need always to reinforce that sense of values, of free speech, freedom of expression, and yet peaceful, nonviolent, standing up for what we believe and for our fellow human beings who may feel endangered. So those are just a few of the colleges and universities that I see, I know you see, as you scan our horizon. Yesterday's paper had someone quoted from our campus saying, we need to stick up for higher education. Yes, we do. Call to action. We all have to stand up for higher education, particularly in this era in which reputable polls the Pew Foundation Research Center, the Gallup, are telling us that more and more families are less and less confident that investing in a college degree for a family member is really a good investment. And I think, really? Some of them worry about college debt. Others worried that somehow it won't pay off. Oh my gosh. We all have to stick up for higher education if our worry is that it won't pay off because every bit of data that we all know is that it pays off in every way. Quality of life, betterment of society, health outcomes, opportunity. I'm just gonna leave off to the side the fact that you can earn a million more dollars at the very least national averages if you are a college graduate. So those are, that's one of the calls to action today. Let's all make sure that we are advocates for higher education, as I know all of you are. We are Montana to me means we are changing. And our Strategic Planning Council helped us think that through with about at least five ways that we would 
create change together. And they have identified five strategic opportunities. And for each of those, here's a call to action. They've asked me, and I'll be reaching out to you shared governance leaders and others, to appoint a work team for each of the five strategic opportunities to really make sure that we follow up and develop operational goals and plans for each of those in preparation for a new president to build on, amend, massage, change, and lead. Those five are, and please think of them now as a call to action because I would like many of you in this room to be one of those 15 to apply for, tell your Tell someone, tell your dean, tell your supervisor, that would interest me, that work team. And the five strategic opportunities are engage students where they are. The second one is invest in people. A third one is partner with place. The fourth one is reinvent the heart of the curriculum. And the fifth one is foster new knowledge, creation, and innovation. Five important strategic opportunities solicited and vetted with thousands of contacts last year. And just as an example, as I think of some of those, I think of engaging students where they are. One example that some of you are working on is Project Reconnect. Right, Roger, Mario, others? Did you know that in Montana, we have over 100,000 people who have some college, no degree? How can we reach out to them with online programs and degree completion programs so that their original investment is capitalized upon to be completed? Which reminds me of Complete College America. I never know quite how to say the name of that organization, which most states of the union now are members of. Should I say, Complete College America? Or just casually, Complete College America is the name? No. I want to say it with emphasis. And that means our efforts in engaging students where they are has to do with retention initiatives and is Brian French in the house? Is Elvis in the house? Brian, uh, a rock star that you are, the Office of Student Success. Yes, thank you. You and others and the deans, many of you have plans, options, have tools under consideration. Matt Riley and his team, options under consideration for technological ways to build on the best indicators nationwide of retaining students. For example, it sounds a little bit like high school, but attendance tracking. Matt and his team are having some of you pilot that to make it really easy with the, an app on their phones, the student phones, or some way so that it's not taking valuable class time and that we don't appear as if we are intrusive chaperones, they're college students after all, and yet the data tell us that if we know why or that a student has not come to, to class for a few days, it might be time not for coddling, but to just ask the question, how can we make a special effort for student success. I'm looking at one of you who said to me this year, you're off in a distance, but I see you even with, without my glasses on, who said, President Stearns, isn't it really important that we make sure we don't compromise our quality to get students through class or through to, and I said, of course, I couldn't agree with you more. We must never compromise our quality our assessments must be authentic. Each and every student must succeed and achieve our high expectations. But 
they have made an investment and so have we. Let's work together through various personal relationship tools and technological tools to do that extra step to ensure that our retention rate goes from 70%-ish up to at least high 70s and then eventually into the 80s with the best advising, the most internships, rewarding mentorships. So yes, we, those are the five, and my call to action is for one of you to, uh, many of you, to be on those teams. The next thing I would like to say is that we are Montana to me means that we are challenged. Every state is challenged. That includes us and every university is challenged. Three ways that we are challenged. One, enrollment management. Some people think that is only the University of Montana. Hardly. Every university from the richest and most elite in the country to the smallest and most fragile is challenged with enrollment management. Who to recruit, how to recruit for success to meet our mission, how to find the best fit for a particular student, and if it is not our place or our department or our school, then to say so. And enrollment management is retention. And I think that we all know that. In connection with recruiting and retention, last year we recruited a new vice president for student affairs and enrollment management. And Tom Crady and his staff are doing great work laying the groundwork for more data-driven, driven, data-informed recruiting to build up the number of applications because we are a campus, while we may not know the exact number of students who fit here that we can accommodate, we do know that we could grow. And it needs to be with those students who feel and have a good fit with us. So thank you, Tom, and your staff for your continued work. It is plowing new ground. It looks as if this fall that we have stabilized and possibly increased our first year students. That was what we were hoping for after several years of decline. We will give you specific numbers in a few days, but every sign is very positive in that regard, including the numbers Sandy Schooner was just Sandy Curtis, she got married this summer, was telling me in regard to our residence halls. Um, more people have moved in by now than usually at this point. There's a lot of energy and engagement there. We are also, a big second challenge for us is always, and any college or university, to make ends meet. Any family, any organization, and the most rich and the most poor universities also have this challenge. How do you make ends meet? Because the demands for resources are nearly infinite. One of the people who has really been helping us to make ends meet and to administer us efficiently is Vice President Mike Reed. And Mike, would you please stand for a moment while I just say a word or two about you? Oh my gosh, I hope you're still here. You, there, oh, I knew you'd go clear to the back. Mike, don't sit down yet. Most of you know Mike Reed, and you know what a capital fellow he is. And you also probably have heard that he has accepted another position at another lucky university I just would like everybody to say thank you. Mike.
His last day is coming right up, and many of you know that I have appointed Rosie Keller to be the interim vice president for administration and finance. And she has a lot of experience, and I'm sure she'll do a great job. And finally, we are challenged, as you try to make ends meet, in ensuring that a university that has had nearly 85% now of our budget going to personnel, when benchmarks for universities such as ours should be down in the lower 70s. That is why we have convened, and many of you have been working so hard on APASP. It's hard to say, but that, of course, is academic programs, administrative services, prioritization. And many of you in this room, I, I'm, I see you here, are, have been working all summer on that, and you are watching, and you're looking at that website, and you're preparing your reports. I know we're working on ours in the president's office, because each program and service of the university will be analyzed and assessed, and so it should be, to see what happens next. Is it a candidate for significant growth and development? Is it a priority for significant modification, change? Is there insufficient evidence, which is the case for some of our new programs? Is it kind of in the middle where it is, should be considered for development or prioritization? Those are the categories that the committee is thinking about and will be evaluating. And here's a call to action. They need help. They need 36 additional report reviewers. And we'll put out that call this next week. And we will need additional readers, reviewers, to work with an APAS member to look at these dozens, if not hundreds, of reports that are coming in. So please give that a, a thought. I would like to say, when I say we are Montana, that we are historic. We will be celebrating our 125th anniversary in February. Ron Tapper, you heard me say, I hope it's, the other day I talked with you, I hope it's pretty jazzy. Uh, Vice President Wittenberg is helping to chair the Forward 125 planning group. I think it's going to be quite fun might have a little bit of a New Orleans vibe to it. We'll see. The, uh, the new logo for it is finished. We are preparing. And I think that will be a celebration in which I, you know, get to sleep in until 8 o'clock. The new president will be here, but I will come into the party that day and have birthday cake and hear the address, I hope, by the new president and others as we celebrate this landmark of our historic university. And last, I would like to say when I think of us as Montana, we are resourceful. And in fact, in some significant ways, we are growing. So at this time, I would like to call up to the podium with me um, the president and CEO of the UM Foundation, Cindy Williams, and the Vice President for Creative Scholarship and Research, Scott Wittenberg. There they are. Come on up. Now you see you have some cider on your table because we are going to have a toast. And I'll be specific in just a moment. As I said, we have many ways in which we are resourceful and growing. It is astounding to many who look at us from the outside, that this university truly, I mean, actually, they wanted to check our numbers. By the way, one other person I'm going to make come forward for part of this toast is Nathan Lindsay. Nathan, while you're making your way up here, I'll tell you why he's coming up too. Just so many astounding achievements. I probably could and should fill the podium, but I'm just going to mention three. And while Nathan's coming up, I want all of you to know, if you didn't already, 
that in our seven-year review by the Northwest Commission on Colleges and Universities, led by Nathan Lindsay, Associate Provost, who was then chosen by Northwest to chair the a demonstration project on assessment for four universities, including places like the University of Oregon, the University of Puget Sound. It was our Nathan who was called to lead that. And does anyone else ever remember a university getting through that kind of accreditation without one qualification or recommendation? Don't think so. I don't. Be ready to toast. You're, gonna, you're one of the reasons we, the university, and your academic excellence will be one part of this toast. Part two of this toast. Oh, we'll just save the applause for everyone all at once. I know Shannon's dying to applaud. Part two of this toast has to do with our achievements, and that means your achievements, you researchers, you faculty, in earning sponsored research. These aren't the earmark days. This now press conference of achieving a new level, $88 million, give or take, of sponsored research setting another record for the University of Montana. You think we are Montana means we're resourceful and growing? It does. That's due to a lot of you. It's actually all due to you. <laughs> and the research and creative scholarship that you engage in that make you competitive nationwide. We are hugely proud of you. And the third part of our toast will be that part of invest in people, you strategic planners, you remember part of it was invest in relationships. The way that you get now up to another record-breaking level of philanthropy by our foundation, 84.5 million this year, when just three year, five years ago, it was, Cindy, maybe 20 million. Think of that. Think of that. And some of that credit, of course, is due to my predecessor, Royce Engstrom, who built wonderful relationships with donors over those years. And so, we are the envy of many universities of our type and in our region or across the country for these three levels of academic excellence, research excellence, and philanthropic achievement. Washington, the X, the, uh, the Frankies who are here today uh, for the College of Forestry and Conservation, an anonymous donor who has given us our first endowed shares in a couple of colleges, it's stunning. So I call on you now to stand and raise a glass to this level of excellence and research. And when you think we are Montana, think of these leaders and the relationships they have invested in and you have accomplished. And that will conclude my remarks, and that is, we are Montana. Cheers. Thank you all very much. Media, I promised you I'd meet you out in the hallway in a few minutes, and I will. Cheers. Yeah. That's for you. Cheers. There we go.